Good evening. Good to see you guys. Tonight we're going to continue and wrap up what Pastor Luke started last week uh, on this series called Thankful Thieves, looking at what things can steal our thankfulness. If you were not here in second service, uh, my wife Marin and I had a baby just a week and a half ago. Uh, he is doing well. His name is Wells Jeffrey. Uh, he's doing really good. Mom is good. I think they're somewhere here. I don't know where, but we're having lots of fun finding out. We're, we're reminded again of how much laundry you do with a newborn. So much laundry. But he sleeps well, sleeping really good, sleeping through the night. I am at least. <laughs> but Thanksgiving is this week. Who's a little like shocked that Thanksgiving is this week? It doesn't seem like it should be just a few days from now. We'll be sitting around the table eating some turkey, having a good time. So I want you, this morning we, we were in a, a message of Thanksgiving table, and we talked about that we have so much to be thankful for. So I want you just to think right now, what are three things that you are thankful for? Three things that you are thankful for. Now you got those three things. Turn to someone and share with them what your three things that you are thankful for be friendly. Could anyone not think of three things? Perfect. We're doing, we're doing good. But tonight, we're looking at thankful thieves things that steal our thankfulness, and tonight I want to focus on this thing called comparison. Comparison is something that can steal your thankfulness, and comparison is something that so many of us, I think, can struggle with, and it's something that, that's such a common thing to struggle with. We can be so content with what we have until we see what somebody else has, and we're like, ooh, I want, I want that too. Ooh, I, not just I want that, but I need that. I, I need what they have, right? We're, we're happy with what we have until we see what they have. And I think social media plays a big part of this. Facebook, Instagram, because we can always see what people have, what they're doing, where they're posting from, right? Maybe they post that they just got a new car or just got a new house, and, and you're a little envious. You're, you're comparing, well, what, how does their car look compared to mine? Uh, maybe this NH table series was a struggle for you because you're constantly comparing how good does their dining room table look compared to mine? How happy is their family in the picture compared? We got to retake the picture, fam. You guys aren't smart. Kids, you need to smile in this picture. It's going on Facebook, all right? Then maybe there's a little bit of comparison going on, on there with, uh, with the NH table. Or maybe, you know, this time of the year, uh, it's getting cold, and you're seeing someone maybe post a picture on vacation on Facebook, and it seems like they're always going on vacation. They're always going somewhere else good, and here I am. I'm sitting here in Urbandale, Iowa in the cold, and my one vacation this year was the Omaha Zoo, and here they are, and they're going to, like, the Caribbean. They're going to Europe. They're, they're, they're posting the picture of them reading a book by the pool, and you're like, I hate that book. You can see their toes. You're like, I hate your toes, and that pool looks disgusting. And you're just like, you're, you're looking at me you're like, wow, you go on all these vacations, and here I am. I'm stuck in Urbandale in the cold. And we look at what they're posting, and we're comparing what they're posting to our lives. And I think the problem is, is that we're comparing their highlight reel, other people's highlight reel, to our real life. We're comparing other people's vacations to our, our bad cold week that we're having here at home. And I want you to see that the point where comparison begins is where contentment ends. When, we, when, we're, when we're not content anymore, we begin to compare. And comparison, it will kill your thankfulness. I want you to see that comparison, it does two different things. Comparison, it makes us feel superior and it makes us feel inferior. And neither of those bring honor to God. They'll do one of two things. They'll make you feel superior, make you feel inferior. For example, all right, you, uh, you're looking at their vacation. Oh, man, they're on that vacation. They must be so rich. They go on vacations all the time. But like I said, I'm just stuck here at home. I just went to the Omaha Zoo. They have so much more money than me. I'm poor, right? Makes you feel inferior. That doesn't, what I just said does not bring honor to God. Or the opposite. 
right? Look at me, I got some new clothes, I just got a new car, I'm looking real good. Look at their car compared to mine. I bet they can't even afford the shoes that I'm wearing right now. Like, I look so good, right? That makes you feel superior. That doesn't bring honor to God. Compares, when we compare, comparing, nobody wins. Nobody wins in comparison. And Andy Stanley, he says that it's this place called Ur. Everybody say Ur. Ur, right? I want what they have plus Ur. I want to be bet. Ur. I want to be rich. I want to be pretty. Right? I want what they have plus Ur. And some of you, you just skip right past the Ur and jump to the, the S. I want to be the rich, the smart, the bet. There it is. All right, we just jump right to that est, and we get stuck in this place of, of, I'm happy with what I have. Oh, look at what they have. I want that, and I don't just want that, but I want that plus more. I want that, and I want it to be the best. Tonight, I just want to share with you briefly from the story in John chapter 20 that is actually a pretty funny story. Did you know that the Bible, it has some pretty funny stories in it, and as I was reading this, uh, I just found that this was a pretty comical story that I wanted to share with you. And there, we see that there's this rivalry going between two of the disciples, right? When I, when I think of the disciples lots of times, I think that they're all like best friends, that they're just helping each other out, like they're just buddy-buddy right there. But we see in this story that there's a little bit of a rivalry going on, and it's between John and Peter. And to be honest, if I was Peter, I don't think I would like John either. I think I would have a little problem with this. If you notice in, in John, uh, throughout his gospel, he refers to himself in third person the whole time. Anybody, would anybody here get annoyed with that? If you're here and you refer to yourself in third person, Jesus loves you, but we're going to pray for you at the end of the service because that can be annoying, okay? But he refers to himself in third person, and he also refers to himself as, anybody know? The one Jesus loved. Not like one of the ones Jesus loved, but he refers to himself as the one Jesus loved. So here he is calling him, referring to himself in third person and as the one Jesus loved. A little context of this story. This is three days after Jesus was crucified on the cross. Jesus was supposed to be in the tomb. Mary went to the tomb. She found that the tomb was empty. She went to go find some people and tell them. She told Peter and John, and I want you to take note as we read this story how many times John makes reference that he was faster in a foot race than Peter. Verse 2, so she came running to Simon Peter and the, the other disciple, there it is, the one Jesus loved, hello, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple, third person, outran Peter and reached the tomb first, right? He's like, I outran him, I got there first. He bent over, looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him, making reference that he beat him there, and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Verse eight, finally, the other disciple, third person, who had reached the tomb first, I beat him, also went inside. He saw and believed. Multiple times we say, he says, hey, Jesus is risen and I'm faster. Right? He's like, hey, I beat him. I'm, I got there first. He came in behind me. The one Jesus loved. He's the fastest disciple. Right? How ridiculous. Anybody ever noticed that when they've read this story before? Like, that's just, that's funny to me. Right? Anybody else think that that's a little funny that that's referenced in here? But we see that that comparison, it's not something that just happens right now. It was happening with the disciples. It was happening in the Bible. They were so worried about what was going on. And then in chapter 21, we see that John talks about how when they were in the boat, he recognized that it was Jesus first. I, I knew it was Jesus first. And then there's this powerful part of the story where, where Peter is talking with Jesus. We know that, that when Jesus was crucified, we know Peter was like, hey, I, I'll, I'm not going to deny you, and he ends up denying him. And Peter re gets reinstated with Jesus. Peter is also the one who almost takes shots at the other disciples, like, hey, Jesus, even if all these losers quit loving you, I'm still going to love you, right? He's, it's like they're constantly in this battle of comparison of like, I'm going to love you. I'm the one that you love the most. I'm the fastest. They're always comparing. 
But we see that there's this powerful story in chapter 21. And, and, and Jesus says, Peter, do you love me? He's like, yes. And he says, then feed my sheep three times. And then we pick up this story in verse 20. It says, Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved, there he is again in third person, was following them. When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Jesus answered, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? He's saying, why are you wasting your time on him? I'm talking to you. You must follow me. So here they are, Jesus and Peter, they're walking along. Jesus is kind of like bringing Peter back. He's telling him, he's telling him what you're calling and say, this is what I want you to do. This is what I want, this is what I want for your life. And in the middle of receiving something from Jesus, he's so worried about what's going on with John that he stops Jesus and he says, what about him? I've noticed that comparison, it can also happen in our spiritual life, right? We look at that person, oh man, why do they keep getting blessed? Man, that, it just seems like God just keeps blessing them over and over. And I'm, I'm sitting here in worship and I, I'm not really feeling it. I'm in this dry season and here they are, they're just having this moment with Jesus and we're constantly comparing. And Jesus is saying to Peter, he's like, you follow me. Your lane is to feed my sheep. You are to follow me. He's saying, don't worry about him. I want you to see that we cannot faithfully follow Jesus if we're always comparing ourselves to someone else. Peter couldn't get everything he had from God because he was comparing himself to John. We cannot come in and receive everything God has for us if during worship, if during whatever the time is, the altar time, we're so worried on how, how's that person responding? How, how blessed are they compared to me? It, it, we got to stay in our lane. The fastest way to kill something special is to compare it to something else. And why do we do this? It's, it's because by nature, we are sinners, right? And we're trying to fulfill uh, some external win for this internal longing we have. We're trying to do something here on earth, trying to get a win to fill this hole in our heart. But hear me, no external win, no blessing, no, no, no thing that we can do on our own, no amount of money, no amount of Instagram followers, no rank that we can have in our job will ever fill that hole. Nothing can satisfy you in this earth except for Jesus, God who created you. And we cannot be so worried about what does everybody else have. We have to focus on what's God calling me to do. So I want to ask you this question tonight, and I want you to think about this. Who or what will define my worth? Who or what is going to define my worth? Maybe some of you, it's, it's a relationship. It's a, maybe it's even a spouse Maybe it's, it's how much money you have. Maybe it's your job, maybe it's power, maybe it's uh, something on Instagram, your, your followers, your likes on Instagram. Maybe it's, it's your friends that you're allowing to define your worth. Who or what is gonna bring meaning to your life? Who or what is defining how much you are worth? If your answer is anything besides Jesus, then you will be miserable for the rest of your life. We cannot be so worried about what someone else thinks, what someone else has. If our answer is not Jesus, Jesus defines my worth, then we'll be miserable for the rest of our lives. That's why I love uh, this verse in, in Hebrews chapter 12. We're, we're talking about running our own race, not comparing against someone else, but, but running the race that Jesus has put before you. And in Hebrews chapter 12, uh, we, we see that it says this, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Understand that there's a race marked out for you specifically. It's not just this big race that we're all going against each other. There's a race marked out for you, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. If we're comparing ourselves to someone else, we're running a race that we're, we're never going to win. But here it says, run your race, the race set before you. One of, the, one of my hobbies that I have is golfing. Anybody here like to golf? Anybody here golf but you don't like it? <laughs> That's what I thought. The first time that I ever went golfing, it was probably my third year or second year of, of college, and I came back and I'd never been golfing before. And one of my best friends, I went with one of my best friends, his name's Josh Hostetler. I don't know if his parents are here tonight, but uh, 
I went golfing with him. If you know Josh, he's been golfing for a long time. Like he golfed on his high school team. He golfed in, on the North Central team. He was good on the North Central team. And me being an athlete, I thought, I can do this, right? Like I've, I played baseball. The ball's coming in and I'm, I'm hitting a ball that's coming in. This ball's just sitting here. I, I can hit a golf ball. Like how hard can it be? And also me being one of Josh's best friends, I thought, I want to destroy Josh, right? Like anybody else a little competitive, and when you play a sport, you're like, I want to, if I'm going to play this, I'm going to win, all right? I think I got that from my mom. So I was like, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat Josh. Like, I, I'm going to do this. So we get out there, and if you've ever played golf before, especially your first time, maybe you're still this way, but the first time you are really bad. Like it's something that takes a lot of work. You don't just get out there and you're not just like naturally good. I, I remember being out there and being so frustrated. And I remember looking over and thinking like, man, look at Josh. Josh is so good. And I'm here trying to, trying to beat Josh, but guess what? Josh didn't even, he wasn't even competing against me. Like it wasn't even something where he was like trying to beat me. He was just playing the game and having fun. And here I am trying to beat Josh and he wasn't even worried about me. How many people are we comparing ourselves to that aren't even competing against us? How many people are we saying, oh, what do they have compared to what I have? And they, they're not even worried about it. They're running their, their race. They're in their lane. You know, if, you, if you've ever run track before, they say the fastest way to slow down is to turn your head side to side. It's to look one way or the other. But the, the best way to just keep going fast is to keep your eye on the finish line. It's to run your race. It's to stay in your lane. Run your race. So guess what? Here's what I love about this. It means that when someone else is running their race and they're winning in their race, we can cheer them on because we're not competing against them, right? They're running their race. I can cheer them. I can say, you're doing great. Like, man, keep going in your walk. Keep, keep killing it at your job. You're doing so good. We can build each other up because it's not me versus them. It's, it's them finishing and it's me finishing. And that's winning the race. How do you keep from having uh, your thankfulness taken away? Is you stop comparing yourself. As you, you keep your eyes on your lane. You see what God's given you. This is my lane. This is what's got, what God's given me. I am, I'm blessed and I'm going to win this race. Because it's my lane. It's my race. So what do we do? We wake up every day with our eyes on Christ. And we say, who or what's going to define my worth? It's Jesus. It's not other people, it's not my boss, it's not my parents, it's not my kids, it's not my bank account. Jesus defines my worth. He defines how much I am worth. And that is something to be thankful for, that we don't have to compete against anyone else. It's just, I'm running my race that God has put before me. So here's how I want to close tonight, and it's a little different, and I... I preached a little shorter because I wanted to do things different tonight. I'm going to give you a moment with just some music playing. I just want you just to pray about two questions that I'm going to give you. Just you and God, just at your seat. And then I'm going to wrap that up after just a couple minutes. And I've got some questions I'm going to throw on the screen. And I want you just to get in groups around you, maybe like three or four people, and just discuss this. Talk through what does this mean for you? Where, where are you comparing yourself to? It might be a little awkward. It might seem like it might be you stepping out of your comfort zone a little bit to talk about it with somebody. But this is something that we do uh, in youth group on Wednesday nights. And it's something that we find very helpful that when we hear something that we can talk about it, we can discuss it, and we can have someone that's praying for us. So if you would just bow your head and close your eyes, I'm gonna ask you a couple questions here. And I just want you just to spend some time just praying about this, asking God, and maybe you already know. Maybe I'm going to ask you one of these questions and you already know. You're, you're in it and you're, you're doing it and you already know exactly your answer. But maybe God's speaking something different to you tonight. The first thing is this. I want you to pray for clear guidance on what your lane is. What is my race? That might be a job. That might be something different. I don't, I don't know what that is. That might be a, a volunteer role here at church that, that God's speaking to you to do. Maybe you've been in a workplace for a long time and saying that, well, I've been doing this. This is what I'm just going to keep doing. But maybe God's calling you to something different. You've been running from that for a long time. But what is 
your grace? What is your lane? Second question I want you just to think about, ask God to open your eyes to see things differently is this, where am I comparing myself to others that needs to stop? Or who am I comparing myself to? I'm gonna pray and then when I'm done, you can just find a few people around you. And there'll be some questions on the screen for you just to discuss together. And when you're done, just pray together and you are, you're free to go. If you want to continue, just pray and the altars will be open when we're done. Dear Jesus, thank you for every person that is here tonight, God. I thank you that we are so blessed, that we have so much to be thankful for. God, I thank you that that you've given each one of us a race to run on our own, that we don't have to compete against anybody else, but we're just running to finish the race. And I pray that you would give us the strength that we need to do that, that you would help us to keep our eyes on the finish line, to not compare ourselves to other people, that we would, as we go through life, as we scroll on social media, that we would cheer other people on, that we wouldn't compare what do they have versus what do I have, how do they look versus how do I look, but we would cheer them on, that we would compliment people, that we would, that we would be so outgoing and friendly, that we would be your hands and feet, that we would love everyone around us, and we'd be so thankful for what you've given us. I pray you'd bless this time of discussion, that we would grow together and we'd grow closer to you together. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Find two or three people or so around you. Go through these questions together and then pray and you guys are free to go.